Good morning. Welcome to church this morning. My name is Tracy McShann and I serve as your Director of Congregational Life and I'd just like to call your attention to a couple of announcements. One is that we are selling today tickets to our uh, Why Are You Youth, that's our youth coffee house that will be taking place in January. Yes, it's a wonderful event and I really encourage you to attend and tickets go on sale today. You can get those at the Welcome Center so stop by after the service and do that in Channing Hall. Uh, the other thing I want to let you know about is our circles, which, are, which is small group ministry that meets in our members and friends' homes, uh, open up several times a year, and uh, this is one of those times, January. So we're taking sign-ups now for circles. So if you're interested or want to learn more about circles, stop by the Welcome Center in Channing Hall after the service to learn more about that. And I also wanted to let you know about our Inquirer series that is going on in um, the parlor, which is um, our old offices for those, who, those of you who have been around here for a while, those of you that haven't, they're just outside the door. And we offer a meet and greet um, after both services in the parlor. So if you're visiting us or uh, for the first time or it, you've been here several times and you just wanna know more about who we are, or about membership, that's a great place to stop in after the service and learn more about us. I invite you now to uh, silence your cell phones as we begin worship. Thank you. We gather here in worship this morning as people have done for centuries to pause and look into the faces of those around us and see reflected in our eyes the goodness and holiness of the world. We gather in worship as people have done for so many years to stop and give thanks for life, to note how fragile and precious it is. So we join in this moment, this hour, to comfort and be comforted to move our lives one day more closer to love and justice. This day will move in story and song a pageant to celebrate our children and the lives of all children. So let goodness and love move generously in this hour. Welcome, and let us worship. Let's continue in song. Let's join together in singing our opening hymn, O come, all ye faithful, it's found in your order of service.
Please remain standing and join us in saying together the affirmation of our church on the front cover of your order of service, followed by the Christmas doxology inside. Love is the doctrine of our church. The quest of truth is its sacrament, and service is its prayer. To dwell together in peace, to seek knowledge and freedom, to serve humanity in fellowship, to the end that all souls shall grow in harmony with the divine. Thus do we covenant with each other. You hear the words I'm about to share with you each December as we dedicate children. They bear repeating because the truth they contain is a cornerstone of our faith. Sophia Lyon Foz wrote, For so the children come, and so they have been coming. Always in the same way they come, born of the seed of man and woman. No angels herald their beginnings. No wise men see a star to show where to find the babe that will save humankind. Yet each night a child is born is a holy night. Fathers and mothers sitting beside their children's cribs feel glory at the sight of a new life beginning. They ask where and how will this life end, or will it ever end? Each night a child is born is a holy night, a time for singing a time for wondering, a time for worshiping. When we dedicate children, we remind ourselves that the life of a child is both an awesome responsibility and a wonderful gift. A child comes to us out of the mystery, and while we might influence that child by our example and teaching, the child's life unfolds in its own way. Today, parents bring their children to us so that we can dedicate our efforts to help raise their, them spiritually, to raise spiritually healthy and strong children. I invite the parents and godparents with children to be dedicated to come forward now. While parents have the primary responsibility in raising their children, they bring them to us today in acknowledgement that their children are not merely their own, but part of a larger community. As members of this church, we all share the privileged task of nurturing these children, guiding them, teaching them, and loving them as they grow. We bless each child that we dedicate with a rose dipped in water. The rose symbolizes the unfolding and beauty of life. We have removed the thorns from these roses, but we know that we cannot always remove them for our children or for ourselves. The rose is a reminder that at its core, life is good. When we encounter thorns of any kind, the church community is here to help and to comfort. The water is a symbol of the source of life out of which we all have come. It connects us to all generations and to all life. It is reminiscent of the water of baptism and commitment that for us does not cleanse an original sin but rather enjoins a person with a community in love, forgiveness, and hope. It symbolizes the transformation we hope for each who is committed to our version of a life in faith and the receptivity of the spirit of love and life. 
So we first ask you, the parents who are here before us, to state your commitment. Do you, who are the parents of these children, pledge your loyalty and love as you nurture them to adulthood? Do you vow to raise your children with faith and as ethical and moral human beings? If so, say we will. And I ask the families that are connected to these children to rise. Yeah. We have here with these children families and godparents who are charged to guide and support these children in all matters of spirit and to be there when their parents' wisdom falls short. So families and godparents, <laughs> it happens, believe me. <laughs> families and godparents, do you vow to guide these children's hearts in the way of love and compassion to teach them to live not only for their own good, but for the good of others? Do you vow to guide these children in the ways of the world and to help them face the challenges they meet? If so, say we will. If you our may be seated. If our visitors today will bear with us for a moment, I ask the members of our congregation and all children and youth present to please stand. For years to come, these young lives will be part of our community of mutual caring, concern, responsibility, and affection. Will you now welcome them into our church and pledge that by your example and your participation here, you will help create a community in which they can grow in stature and faith? Please answer, we will. We will. You may be seated. How about, will you... Jessica and Bo, will you come up? I married at least three of these couples here. <laughs> it's a great uh, privilege to, to be with you. And, yeah, come with us here. Stand here. Jessica and Bo bring their daughter to us. They say they want her to grow up with knowledge and a spiritual life. They want her to love this church and want to be here and trust here. They want to find her mentors here. They want her to live a life of worth and dignity and love for all. They have brought here godparents, Valerie and Chris, who have been their friends. They have been there for them in tough times and they know and love Jessica and Bo's daughter. They understand and share the beliefs of this family. Jessica says, we know that they will support us in her spiritual and moral development. So we bless today this child. Will you say her name? Sophie Ellis. Sophie Ellis. May your thoughts be wise. May your lips speak truth. May your heart know love. And may the work of your hands be blessed all the days of your life. Everything all right there? <laughs> Just. Grant and Jana bring their child here. They want him to know that he is okay and that he is enough. They want him to live a life of peace, to have a basic respect for all religions, to learn thinking skills here, to respect other people, and to be a person of compassion. And they bring here these godfathers two of them, Shelley and Kelly. Shelley is a friend and mentor, and he gives those around him understanding and empathy. And Kelly is a cousin. He's, Jana says he is always there for us when we need help. He is kind to others and a most loyal friend. So we bless this child. Will you say his name? Hugo Ingram. May your thoughts be wise, may your lips speak truth, may your heart know love, and may the work of your hands be blessed all the days of your life. We'll get to you.
Diane and John bring their child here to us. One has been dedicated before already. Yes, he's in the spotlight, though. They want happiness and success and opportunities to succeed for their child. Diane was raised in the Unitarian Church in Tulsa. She knows the value of this community, and they want him to know that there's not just one religion, that all religions have a piece of the truth, and that is why they dedicate this child here today. Will you say his name? Jacob King Panagos. Jacob King Panagos. May your thoughts be wise. May your lips speak truth. May your heart know love. And may the work of your hands be blessed all the days of your life. Thank you. Oops. Narelle and Jay bring their child here. They want her to know this place is a place of peace. They want her to learn to give and receive love. They were raised in church community, and they have found this one to be a comfortable place for them as adults. They want her to have, yes, opportunities to open her mind and be mentored by this multi-generational community. Will you say her name? Juliana Delin Liddell, may your thoughts be wise, may your lips speak truth, may your heart know love, and may the work of your hands be blessed all the days of your life. <laughs> dedicating one or two children? Both. Jessica and Vince bring both of their children to us. They want their children to know love and happiness and fulfillment. They want to raise this family knowing that we are all one human family. They want them to have respect for all people. And Tiffany and Josh are here, godparents. Jan uh, uh, Vince <laughs> said... Vince and Jessica have said, Tiffany and Josh are brilliant, warm, and loving. Josh is a strong man, they say. And Tiffany is a rock in their lives. They've been there for them. Jessica said to me, I know if something happened to Vince and I that Tiffany and Josh would raise our girls to be warriors of justice. They would raise them to be compassionate and open-minded and seek happiness in whatever they do. And we know they will be an important influence in their lives. So we welcome you. Will you say her name? Giselle Elise. Giselle Elise. May your thoughts be wise. Wait. <laughs> may your lips speak truth. May your heart know love. And may the work of your hands be blessed all the days of your life. And will you say her name? Sage Havana. Sage Havana. May your thoughts be wise, may your lips speak truth, may your heart know love, and may the work of your hands be blessed all the days of your life. Thank you. Now, if you'll join me in the congregational response to these families and godparents, this blessing and benediction that we say on the children who are dedicated here. May you grow, grow to love that which is good. May you seek and attain that good. May you learn to be gentle and respect all creatures. May you be filled with the courage to challenge evil and the faith to lift up hope. May you endow those who know you with faith and hope. May you come to know that which is eternal. May it abide with you always. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Thank you. Well, good morning. We feel blessed to have so many young babies and children in our 
congregation today. I'm Reverend Daniel Cantor. I'm senior minister of the church. I'm here with Reverend White, who's our associate minister. We are glad that you are here at First Unitarian Church of Dallas. Today we light the Advent candles. It's the third Sunday in Advent, and we have lit a candle each Sunday. The first for the theme of anticipation, the second for the theme of signs and symbols, And today, the third, the rose candle, is lit for the theme of dreams. Dreams is a theme that you will hear in the story today and uh, is part of the Christmas story as a whole. We also light a white memorial candle today for the people of Newton, Connecticut and their families. I reached out to the UU minister in Danbury, Connecticut, and she replied to me this morning with gratitude for our prayers and thoughts for them. And she said that they, the UUs in Danbury are all okay, and they are ready to help their neighbors in Newton. Today, to say less is more with this mixed company. So we say that we mourn with those who mourn today. And I invite you to see my statement that I made on our website uh, about the events of this week uh, on the front page of the website and on our Facebook page. Why don't we take a moment now to greet each other with peace and love and welcome each other to church. We hope you continue those conversations after worship as you get to know each other even better. Before the offering, I want to just say a few words. You may have received a letter from me uh, this week, uh, an appeal, a year-end appeal. We are asking you to help us finish the year strong. And first and foremost, if you have a pledge with us, Uh, to complete that pledge. We build our budget and everything we do here on the pledges we receive, and we are $100,000 behind on pledge payments. If you have an outstanding pledge, first we ask you to pay that pledge down in the next week or two before the last day of the year. Secondly, we we are asking that if you're in the position to help those who uh, may not be able to fulfill that pledge due to economic reasons this year, that you make an additional Uh, year-end gift to us. Thirdly, if you don't have a pledge and you're here for the first time, you can still make a a gift to the church (laughs) to support this progressive religious community in a city that needs us. And so we we appeal to you to uh, make this church, friends, and members a, a priority in your giving this year. We also, for the first time, if you're like me, you don't carry around cash anymore. So for the first time, we have credit card uh, cards in your pews. You can fill those out and put them in the the plate, and uh, that will uh, count toward a contribution today. We have been greatly blessed, so let us give generously so that others might be blessed by the work of the church. The offering will be given and received.
This year, more than most, we should love this pageant. Not only for the sheep that will come buying down these aisles in a moment, but for the serious pronouncements of proud yet sometimes bashful wise people. Not only for the fact that the character playing the star in this pageant told me, I'm a comet. And not only because it draws us to the real meaning of the Christmas story, but because the pageant draws us back in time to a story of depth and purpose. Like a long line marching back 2,000 years, the characters who will come into this sanctuary come to remind each of us that something enduring and real is embedded in the story, that they come to say wisdom is real and makes a difference, that perseverance saves us, that no one should be shuttered out into the cold, and that the despair of the day can be overcome by the love we have. The pageant has depth and meaning. It is like an imperfect work of art. It both takes us back in time and grounds us in the present. And it is born in its Jewish roots and beyond in the roots of the ancient people who sought to find hope in difficult times. Similar to the Hanukkah story, this Christmas story for our Jewish brothers and sisters, the Hanukkah story points to triumph when all the odds are against them. The rabbi Michael Lerner said this of Hanukkah. He said, understanding that when we connect with the transformative power of the universe, the force of healing and transformation, yud he vav he, God, we become aware that the powerless can become powerful. That oppression of any sort is a contradiction to the fundamental nature of human beings. He said, when that energy and awareness permeates our consciousness, no ruling elite and no system of exploitation can possibly last for long. And I add, no system of violence and despair. I slipped last week in not wishing you a happy Hanukkah a holiday that in my life has always been interwoven with Christmas in my home. The menorah and the tree stood next to each other. For me, they come together because they are both about the triumph of hope over fear, of the light shining hope in the darkness, of the powerless becoming powerful. These themes steer us toward the holiday in a way that has Nothing to do with what we have or don't have, what we can buy or what we can give, but only what is within us and how we can change the world with our beings. These stories ask if we will triumph over our fears, if we will be lights for others, those who are powerless, those who mourn, those who are lost. And the Christmas story asks, will we be the ones who push the lowly into the barn with the animals? Will we be like Herod that pursues power at all costs? Will we be sore afraid of life and all its mystical offering? Or can we be the patient and thoughtful parents and grandparents and uncles and friends that we want to be? Will we be the ones that bring God into the world each day through acts of kindness and love? When we see senseless violence push us to tears, do we know that love will triumph? And beyond all that, it is fun to turn the sanctuary upside down and to welcome in the cast of characters to lead us in worship It is good to give them our attention 
and to see what wisdom they have for us again this year. Friends, it is good to be together on this day with this story, with these songs of hope, perhaps today more than even last week. Let us love this pageant into being. Let us give it our attention more than ever. Let us see our beautiful children here safe, loved, and shining in our admiration. Let us love this pageant into being today. For that is what changes the world. Amen. I want to ask my colleague to come forward and lead us in a moment of prayer. Let's join in prayer together. God of many names, mystery beyond all naming. Some days can seem beyond our comprehension. Here we have in this sanctuary this morning a room full with the blessing of children. Our promise to guide and accompany and protect them all the days of their life. And yet in all of these joys, so many hearts are heavy this morning. We know that there is mourning and sadness of many, and it is here with us today. So we hold close and dear all those who have experienced loss this week. We pray that our hearts will once more be reminded that we are all in this together. Dallas, Newtown. All people connected as one. So let our eyes be open to the mysteries and tender goodness that moves in this world, especially on a day when we tell the story of the holy showing through in the life of a child. The story calls this moment Emmanuel, God with us. Be with us. We pray for those in our community like Katie and Michael Powell. They mourn the death of Katie's grandmother, Jessie. We offer prayers to Margaret Moore, Cliff Brown, Jason Roberts, as they face healing. We honor the life and memory of a former member, Marion Davies. For all our precious lives and each day we live, and every opportunity to care for one another, we offer thanks. For every gift of life we did not create, this moment we offer humble gratitude. May we use our lives in these blessings well. Amen. The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. They that dwelt in the land of the shadow of death, upon them hath the light shined. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Almighty God, Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace.
In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God into a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came unto her, and the angel said unto her, Hail Mary, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, thou shalt bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. He shall be called the Son of the Highest. The Holy Spirit shall come upon thee, that holy thing that shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God, for with God nothing shall be impossible. And the angel departed her. And Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country, into a city of Judah. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And all went to be taxed, everyone to his own city. And Joseph also went from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judah unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David. He went with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. the same country shepherds abiding in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round them. They were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born on this day in the city of David, the Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, Lying in a manger.
And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill to all. came to pass as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go unto Bethlehem, and see this thing which is come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. So it was that while they were there, she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them at the inn. And the shepherds came and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. 
When they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told concerning the child. And all that heard it wondered at these things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea during the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, When Herod heard these words, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. When he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ would be born. And the scribes said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus is written by the prophet, For thou, Bethlehem, and the land of Judea, are not the least among the princes of Judah, for out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. And when the wise men heard the king named Bethlehem, they departed. And lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them, till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy.
when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented him with gifts. We glorify you with the gift of myrrh. And having been warned by God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their country another way. children to come and see our blessed baby. Come. Each and every one of you children, come. See this holy child. And when all had departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. The angel said, Arise, arise, and take the young child and his mother, and flee to Egypt, and be thou there until I bring thee word. For Herod seeks the young child to destroy him, to destroy him. When he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night, and departed into Egypt, and was there until the death of Herod that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Out of Egypt I have called my son. And when they had performed all things according to the law of the Lord, they returned into Galilee to their own city of Nazareth. And the child grew and waxed strong in spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him.
May the spirit of this season, the joy of this story be upon you, and the spirit of our children be lights in your lives, stars to follow. Go in peace, walk softly on your path, and may God shine on you all the days of your life. Amen. How about these children? <laughs> <laughs> director, director.